Are we on? Are, there we are. We're, we're on, on now. We're Live. on. Okay. Okay. So we're Bye. on. Hey. Uh, well, I'm Stefan Brogren, and uh, you might know me as uh, Mr. Simpson on Degrassi, and uh, I'm also one of the producers and a uh, director on the show. And uh, um, I'm not the director of the episode of Bittersweet Symphony that you saw, but uh, but I think we're probably going to be talking a lot about that. Um, this is Abby Ho. Hi, guys. I think you guys might have uh, seen her before. <laughs> Um, she's from our communications department and is sort of like our uh, Degrassi online guru. Am I, <laughs> yeah. Is that right? We can just call it go-to digital person. Yeah. Go-to digital person. Oh, and this and is Ramona. Ramona. Ramona, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Ramona. I am a writer for Degrassi. I've been on for the last two seasons, and I wrote the episode that I think we're probably going to be talking about a lot called today. Called Bittersweet Symphony? Yes. That is what it's called. All right. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so let's go around. Uh, thank you to everyone joining us right now and watching uh, live. We have some amazing people uh, in our Hangout today. So thank you for everyone that's, uh, that's taking the time to join us. Yay. Yay. And why don't we go around and uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, so why don't we start with you, Ashley? OK. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I am uh, 20 years old, and I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Hi, yeah. Ashley. Hi, Hello. Ashley. And we might recognize, and people might recognize Ashley, and because she's an active blogger for us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, where you write blog. for? Plug your blog. Um, I help out with Degrassi Online, and I also uh, do Degrassi Talks, which is a podcast that uh, we do. Um, and I was also on uh, my date with Degrassi. I won my date with Degrassi. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And next? up next, we have uh, Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm currently living in San Leandro, California. Um, after I graduate from college, I'm studying screenwriting and taking producing classes. Um, I plan on going up to Toronto and working up in Toronto. Um, Why? Because <laughs> it's cold. Okay, so you come up here and we'll go down there. How about that? <laughs> All right. We'll switch, no problem. We'll switch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll um, for a TV show there. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> um, no, and I do a lot of Degrassi fan edits. Um, I over the summer I did uh, a season eleven Drew storyline, a fifty minute like kind of like an episode, just kind of Drew's entire storyline for season eleven, and just always like doing fan edits or, like of Degrassi. And unfortunately, because I don't own the content, I can't upload them anywhere. Ah, that's no good. <laughs> yeah, I, I've debated like sending that, putting them on a DVD and sending them to you guys though. Obi, do you have a Tumblr blog, Jamie? I don't. I can make one though. No, don't. <laughs> well, you don't have to do that. That wasn't a suggestion. Yeah. I was just wondering. That's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, then we have Carrie. Come and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm I'm Carrie. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, I'm 29 years old. But I'm, I'm I think that makes me like 80 in Degrassi fan years. <laughs> then um, I'm a million. <laughs> a lot. Thank you. How you doing, Carrie? I'm doing pretty good today. Thanks, Thanks for having you. me here. No problem. Glad you're here. Thank you so much for making it. And then we have uh, Kyra. Can you guys hear me now? Oh, oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> awesome <laughs> sauce. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey guys. Okay, so I'm Kyra. I'm from originally from Michigan, and I live in Boston. I'm studying. I'm getting my MFA and writing for stage and screen. I freaking love Degrassi. I've been watching it since like you were on it back in Degrassi Junior High. Baby. Yeah, I, I probably was a baby too because I don't think I was born back then. But I was. <laughs> I wasn't born, but I've been watching. I've been watching everything ever since then. I'm a huge Degrassi cool. fan. Awesome. Glad you guys can hear me. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for being with us. And I also love how everyone else in the room too. If you guys haven't noticed, like the little cameras on the bottom, every person went like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we got sound. <laughs> Rocking. Awesome sauce. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, finally, we have Miranda. Hi, Go Miranda. Ahead. Hi. Um, I'm Miranda. I'm from Milburn, New Jersey, and I'm an aspiring filmmaker and producer. So, Who's in the background? That'd be my mom. 
Where's your mom? In the background. She's the over there. Yeah, I'm oh, 15, okay. so I can't. And thank is. you. And thank you to um, Miranda's mom, Monica, for making this hangout happen for her. Because um, So for everyone who's watching this right now, if you're under 18, our contest rules allow that if you have you know, a parental or guardian's account um, and someone's available to, to kind of stay on hand and be on camera sort of with you in the background or in any capacity, you can join. So everyone watching this right now, you still have a chance to be on another hangout too. Okay? So that's cool. a plug. That's a shameless plug for now. And on to the fun stuff. Okay, Hello. so um, why don't we start with some questions in the room? If you guys want to do the honors and pick a, the first person to ask something Go, something yeah. difficult. So who has a difficult question? Raise your hand, oh, we're and we'll get difficult. really. Yeah, we're gonna make it hard. Can't we just have someone give us like so? <laughs> what do we have for lunch? Yeah, how do you pick your wardrobe? Something like that. Uh, we Miranda, start? Yeah. We start off, Miranda, why don't we start off with you? Okay. okay. Um, my first question is: How did you get started in the film industry, and what background? and um, experience was necessary to do so. And for Stefan, what was necessary for a smooth transition from actor to producer? And, and Abby, you can, you can answer this too, because I'm really interested. I like what you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually uh, have been writing since I was maybe 10 or 12 years old, started writing fiction, got into screenwriting. Probably when I was 16, I wrote my first feature film. It was something I always loved, always wanted to do. Um, and I went to university to study, um, actually I took an English literature degree, which meant a lot of reading books and really um, understanding story and characters and all that stuff, and took a minor in film. And, you know, I just watched a lot of television, watched a lot of TV, and um, once I graduated, I was just writing, 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 and just kept writing as many screenplays as I could, and um, made a short film that got quite a bit of attention, and then I got my agent, and then I just had a career. So, I mean, it sounds really simplistic and easy, but it was really a lot of, you know, deciding what I was going to do when I was really young and just continually trying to get better and, and um, you know, going for it. So. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was originally on the uh, Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. Uh, I went to a school for the arts. I got into a school for the arts when I think I was in uh, uh, the seventh grade, and uh, not that I necessarily was looking for it, but I was, well, I think my parents were talking to my teachers, and they, they thought it would be good for me to sort of check that out, because I was sort of a bit of a creative guy and kid, and uh, I knew that I sort of wanted to be in in uh, film and television, and uh, I actually got Degrassi through my school, if you can believe it at the time, because they were, they were looking for, they were looking for young actors, but it was a very different industry back then in, in Toronto. So they actually, it wasn't so much you would go to agencies to find kids. I mean, honestly, it was a burgeoning yeah. thing as far as, especially as far as teen television. Um, so they, I was found through the school actually, went through like a crazy audition workshop process where uh, uh, finally was offered. I was actually auditioned. I, now for you fans of Next Generation, on uh, there, there were a bunch of characters on the old Degrassi, the classic Degrassi. Um, Joey Jeremiah was a very popular character. I ended up reading for Joey Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, I didn't get the role, Weird. which is crazy because I was awesome. And uh, oh, I look great. In the door. <laughs> you imagine I was part of the audition process. <laughs> yeah. And I, um, but I, they did. I end up writing a character for me, which ended up being Snake, who later becomes Mr. Simpson. It's the same character, but he went by Snake when he was growing up and then uh, became uh, uh, responsible, I guess, and uh, goes by Mr. <laughs> Simpson now. a teacher now. first and then a principal? That's, yeah, oh yeah, teacher right, I was first. a teacher first. You don't just get to be a principal. Like, yeah, but they, and they, you guys know I was Emma's stepfather and, uh, and still am Emma's stepfather in theory. <laughs> she hasn't died or anything like that. But um, Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at this. Am I, am I screaming also? <laughs> Anyways, yes. to get, uh, I, I, I graduated from, uh, we all graduated from high school and the original Degrassi, and I uh, decided that I wanted to go to theater school afterwards because I just wanted to see, I, I felt maybe I was a little stuck in playing one role, which is really weird because that's what I've been doing for so long. But I realized also that I was really interested in other things on the other side of the camera. And I'd made friends with people who were like aspiring directors and writers. And we started doing our own projects. We did a, you know, a little independent film. And I did that with my friend uh, Samira Ham when we were like 25. And uh, he's a director on Degrassi also. He became a director on Degrassi uh, based on that project that we did so many years ago. Um, the first thing that 
Epitome approached me, Stephen and Linda approached me about doing webisodes, which have been fairly popular over the years, you know, the what ifs and, uh, um, you know, scenes that you don't, we, couldn't necessarily make it to an ep uh, make it into an episode because it was sort of like it's it's not really driving story, but we thought you guys might find it fun to see. And uh, slowly but surely, um, I, you know, a couple of those webisodes. There was a Degrassi of the Dead that we did that turned out being a, ho a Halloween special. I think it's remember we everyone, everyone turned into zombies yeah. and yeah. killed each other, and uh, that we that ended up airing on I think Teen Nick mm -hmm. and, and uh, CTV as a Halloween special, and that sort of like helped me get into the guild a little bit, a little bit more, and and then when we did, uh, we decided we we're going to do the special Degrassi Goes Hollywood. Um, I was sort of now working as a producer on the show, and uh, we were going to get um, uh, Kevin Smith, who is the director of a lot of, of uh, sort of indie films, indie comedies. We wanted him to be involved with the show, and he's you know we asked him what would help him convince him to come back and do the show. He'd already done the show once, and he said, "Well, I'll do it if Stefan directs." And I was like, I "Oh." That. And I, I started laughing. I just I was like, okay, all right. And then afterwards, we started having very serious conversations about it like, uh, with Stephen and Linda. I had to get approved by the network, and and uh, that was sort of like the beginning of a lot of a lot of great stuff that I got to do on the show. So I, now, once again, I mean, I know I didn't make that sound like it just happened overnight because it started when I was thirteen. <laughs> but it's been a long process, but it's been a lot of fun. And I just want to read some of the comments from YouTube that have been coming up as you've been giving this answer. Yeah. Oh and one of the things is that uh, from Stephanie um, McKelly, she said, imagine how different Degrassi would be if Joey was the principal. Because then if you were playing oh. Joey, can you imagine? And also, yeah. another funny comment. It'd be is, more dangerous than I it already like it is. Would be worse. Yeah. It would be worse. <laughs> Yeah. And second of all, I think it's kind of funny because now you've been playing it for so long. Is it Principal Simpson playing Stefan Brogren at this point? <laughs> Not on the laptop. And sorry. that was that was almost his that was his spit that take. That was my spit went, take, guys. Yeah, I do that every once in a while. <laughs> thank you for that awesome um, thank you for all those awesome questions. And Abby. Oh, right, my turn. Um what I guess what do we need to even know? I've been working at Epitome now for four seasons, so I've been here since season nine. It's been a while already. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I've started in business and finance. I graduated from in a from a commerce degree, so I'm a business student. Um, just really loved television and really wanted to work in the film business. Cold called, um, and ended up here because I was calling just to ask, uh, you know, how how do you make a television? Like, what does that mean? What does a production company do? And and I wasn't asking for a job. Uh, went on my grad trip, came back, got a call from here, and they were like, you know what? We could use some new people here and. Uh, they found me a position in business and finance. I was doing contracts and negotiating and like financing the show, so all that really, really fun mm -hmm. stuff. And ended up, um, I guess, just just really love digital. And I was like, why don't you? There's a huge. I was reading everyone's comments. I was reading the like, fan forums and I was reading um, the fan fiction that was coming from Degrassi. And I was just like, you know what? There's this huge community online, and and how can we do that? And just um, Linda and Steven and talk to you know Stephanie, our, our VP of marketing here, and just eventually kind of carved out a position um, just based on the needs of what the community wanted and um, a lot of hours online. Uh, talking to people and you wonderful people kind of make this job possible. So. It's a special company that way where yeah, they, yeah. Uh, they're they very into young, like people sort of with a lot of drive, with stuff behind, you know, like we, we all sort yeah, of had yeah. backgrounds and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we, mm -hmm. we've had stuff to show them in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where they've, um, they're really willing to sort of take people that maybe not a lot of companies would. Mm -hmm. For fairly, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's, it's a show with a lot of history. And they do take chances that way. And yeah. It's a, great, a lot of great opportunities. So. Yeah, absolutely. And this is actually a lead-up question. This is just kind of a question that came out from what you were saying earlier mm -hmm. about the, the minis and webisodes. Yeah. Will they ever be back? Are we going to be doing more? This is from DD Pretty Girl on YouTube. Uh, hi, DD Pretty Girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's always – we always have an appetite to do webisodes. It's just a question, honestly – um, about budget from year to year, things change every year as far as how we how we how many episodes we're going to do, how it's all doled out, and there has to be somewhere in the budget. And trust me, we love doing them. So it, it, it and it changes from year to year, and how you know we sometimes we're finding it's really important for us to have sponsors, and we just want to make sure we have the right partners in that situation because we don't want to like feel like we're selling out, but we also want to have fun with them. So like sometimes we got you know we got Skittles on board, and we did these. 
these ridiculous Skittles uh, webisodes, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, you know, I, it depends on who's involved. So um, if we can, we totally want to, and we're always constantly talking about how can we make them you know, cheaper but still maintain the quality. So when we can, we totally want to make webisodes for sure. Yeah, Come absolutely. Ahead. Sorry, I, I'm just I'm just responding to all the messages. I'm trying to grab everybody's questions at the same time. So, um, yeah, let's jump back into the room. Uh, Kira, would you like to ask the next question? Yes. All right. Uh, um, <laughs> hey. So, what made you decide Cam was to be the character with the suicide storyline as opposed to Craig, who dealt with mental illness in the prior seasons? Oh, I don't know. I wasn't here during the Craig years, so I can't really make the comparison. Can you speak well, to that at all? I don't. I, I, like I sort of mentioned, I don't know how many of you got to watch that after special that we did on Much Music. I know in the States that we, we did make it, uh, we didn't geo-block it, or Much Music didn't geo-block it, so there was an opportunity for you guys to see it. You still can. Um, but the, it's, been, it's, just, it's been a very, very hard subject for us to breach, basically because, first of all, you, you just want to be so you want to be responsible in how you tell a story like this because it's very, very easy for um, a show about suicide to be glamorized, if that makes any sense. We just, you, it's, there's so much fear, I think, for us to, to do it right. And, uh, you know, we've had experiences in the past where, where it hasn't been suicide, but we might have, we might have dealt with a, um, a, a topic that has created copycats. And, and, it's so we're always very conscious of that. It's 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 something that we take ridiculously seriously because we just want to make sure that the stories that we tell are supposed to help you not get into those situations. Try to find the right situation. So, you know, uh, through Craig and through Eli, for that matter, and his his situation, we just didn't feel confident enough, and nor nor did we want to yet. It was just it wasn't it wasn't the right fit, and. Like all things, we, 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 take, we, we take it very seriously. It's like, to give you an example, it was the same when we first realized we wanted to do a transgender character. That might have taken us, I think, three or four years to wrap our head around as far as actually doing it because we're, we were just like, how do we do this right? How do we make it so that we're not making, uh, we're ma not making light of it, but we also want to do it in a way that we got a lot of story for that character. So it took a couple years till we actually got to finding Adam. You know, and it required the right actor also, which is another a really tough thing that has a lot to do with why we were able to do it now, which, uh, you know. Do you yeah. Wanna... Um, you know, I've only been on the show for two seasons, and so I haven't been through, you know, the decade of conversation about um, tackling a suicide topic the way Stefan has and, and some of the writers. But um, I know that coming into season 12, it was it – was, really a sense of it's time and it had a lot to do with um, coming into season 12 brainstorm room we do sort of like a couple weeks where we just sort of debrief what happened <coughs> the season before sort of throw out ideas and topics um, that we might want to tackle in the next season and it just sort of happened I think at that time that there was just multiple news stories about um, teens that had committed suicide and the, the sort of it gets better movement. Was yeah, the part of that. it's better movement was sort of um, had sort of reached its apex and kind of we just it you know I remember Linda coming in and sitting down and kind of looking around the table and being like it's time it's time we deal with it this is the moment and you know we just it, it just we just kind of decided now and we went with it and it, you know w there was no reasons not to do it. there was many reasons not to do it as there always have been in the discussions that have happened and it just felt like if we're going to do it, let's do it now. And we just kind of held on to that and went with it for this season. And you really sort of had to hold on to it because it would be so easy yeah, to like go, oh, we don't, we, let's, let's, let's avoid it. But it was, it was just. Yeah, it just felt like let's. We just, couldn't avoid it anymore. Let's just do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that question. And uh, Carrie, would you like to ask the next question? Uh, yes. Uh, back when you guys did the abortion storyline, there was issues with uh, – they were called the end back then. They, were, they wouldn't air it originally. Uh, did you guys run into any issues as far as you know the network saying you could or couldn't do this with the suicide storyline, or was it uh, – or, or were they just completely fine with the way that you guys had originally planned to do it? Well, you know, I mean, we – honestly, it doesn't matter if we do an episode about – 
I'm trying to think of something that's a little lighter yeah. that we that we do that that we don't have that. We always have a discussion with the network. It's always you know they want to talk. They want to talk how we're going to beat it out and how we're going to like uh, where the where, where the story is going to go. So it's you know some some issues are are more difficult to deal with. Um, I think um, it's interesting that uh, you bring that up because our TNIC is very. Um, they've always been involved in the discussions, and I'm sure in years past they've been you know, privy to the, the sort of desire to do a stu suicide storyline and knowing that the difficulties that the team has always had sort of um, going forward with it. And I think they really, you know, as far as my experience was, when we pitched that there was going to be a suicide storyline in season 12, they kind of understood that th it was also time, you know, and I, they never resisted us approaching the topic, um, I, you know, we're talking of hours and hours of discussion and, you know, um, research that have gone into it, and they were uh, available to us and understood that we wanted to do it, and we're always very supportive of that. So, to answer your question, I don't, I don't recall them pushing back really. Um, they were involved in the process, and they helped us get it to where it needed to be and where it ended up. Yeah, at, they the, were involved. at the beginning of every season, we have a we sit down with the with the execs from both networks and we basically pitch them the season yeah. character by character and and uh, explain them well this is what Adam's going, Adam's going to be going through this is what Claire's going to be going through Drew's going to be going through this we introduce them to this new character Cam we explain to him what his the, you know his pursuits are going to be through the year and, and then we explain to them that we he's we plan on him taking his own life and so it's one of these things that we have very uh, excited Network execs, which is a really good thing. You know, it's it. They usually are always constantly like, "What?" To you know, <laughs> well, you know, we're gonna set up uh, Fiona and Imogen. What? Are you gonna be kidding? So yeah. it's a lot of like great stuff like that. Yeah. And then we we I remember us telling them the story, and there was just a bit of a like in a really good way, <laughs> like in a way that they were just like, "Oh no, what's that gonna do to the school? What's that gonna do to the school?" Yeah. So these things are. I mean, they want the drama too. They want us to be able to tell these stories. So. Um, I, you know, there's never they never wanted us to not touch this story. It's just about how we deal with it, though, yeah. and knowing knowing how Linda and Stephen how much they care about that and how much our writers do that they know we're going to do it responsibly. And they just want us to take them along step by step as we're, you know, as the writers are, you know, writing it out, doling it out. Does that answer your question? Did that help? Yes. There is part of this short Yeah. Yep. Uh, go ahead, Jamie. Would you like to ask the next question? Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions actually. Um, one only is have one. Okay, only I'll one ask, question. Only one. Don't listen, Fine. Don't listen to me. Don't listen yeah, to don't me. Listen to me. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, my question is, um, what advice can you give to um, somebody who is an aspiring writer and producer to get like involved in a show that's so successful, like Degrassi? Man, I wish there was a clear answer. Here's it. If you want to be a writer, you need to write as much as you possibly can because it's very competitive, and especially if you're planning to come to Toronto, um, you know, it's a small industry. Jobs are scarce. Like, I'm just being really honest here. Like, you need to be as good of a writer as you possibly can be, and you got you have to not give up. And whether you work on a small kids show writing three-minute animation or you work on a big show like Degrassi, these are all awesome opportunities that you should grasp onto and you know I didn't this isn't my first gig you know I've worked on a lot of shows and it's taken me time to get to this show um, so and every step of the way has been an amazing learning experience and gotten me to the point where I can be on this show so I would say write and just keep working your butt off and take those small opportunities mm -hmm. and see what you can build build yeah. from mm -hmm. that as far mm -hmm. as you can go. And if you have friends that are also Interested in the industry and are or like and, you know and you discover that 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 person who's like well I'm I'm a, I think I'm you know I want to be a cameraman I want to be a DP and uh, or a director and that's what that's what I found myself doing as just being an actor at, at, at first not just being an actor but um, I found myself wanting to you know have these conversations with other people that were my age struggling at the same time and that's we we, we did a lot of you know, sort of yeah. shared free work, yeah. trying to bu build up our resumes. Mm -hmm. So it's like Ramona's saying, you just got to keep writing, got to keep writing. For for me, we just kept on shooting little short films, some of which were very successful, some of which, uh, you know, we, I remember we shot an independent film that we made for no money, and we yeah. got it on the Independent Film Channel. 
we made we didn't make any money off it, but it was on our resume and it was real. So mm -hmm. it was those you got to tell you got to no one's going to offer you a hundred million dollar mm -hmm. TV show or a movie off the top. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that hundred million dollar yeah. TV show. Like, yeah, you got to carve your yeah. own. You got to carve your own, <laughs> your own little you gotta, experience. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you you meet those people along the way that yeah. go. You got to meet my agent. Yeah. You need to meet this director. You need to meet this writer, and um, you know, a lot of my friends that we we're talking about, we're struggling. We've made, we've all made careers out of, for, for the most part, you know, doing little music videos when they got a chance, you know, that have turned into. Uh, you know, that artist got bigger and said, hey, I want you to do it again, because you never know who that person's going to be. So mm -hmm. the, I think the, the key to it is you, you got to keep, uh, keep out there. Don't think that you can walk into a, a studio of any sort and go, so I wrote this one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's got to be that like, you, you've put a resume together of spec scripts even. Yeah. Like, that's really important also, right, Ramona? Five. Five, five. You had five? Five. Five spec scripts and like is that like half hour or hour or what? Like what? Five of whatever you think: a feature film, a book of poetry, a short story, an original spec script, a spec of an existing TV show. You need five. Yeah, and, and I then think you can get rid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think and I think the, the the proof is that you know everyone sitting here right now has a completely different path, and every person that works in this industry you'll meet with a different story. Mm -hmm. And I think in all of them, the one thing they do have in common is initiative. A lot of passion for what you do, yeah. and a lot of lot of hard work, yeah. and and it's one of those things where no one will tell you uh, what the correct thing, correct answer is, and yeah. what the correct path is. It's just uh, a lot of trial and error. Trial and error. A lot of talking. Can't really to expect favors yeah. mm -hmm. without proving yourself. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I'm, at, I can't, I can't yeah. name a single person I know that walked into a place and said, "I got this script. I love you to produce it. Can you please give it a read?" And a producer going. Uh, I'll put it in this pile of stuff that I'm supposed to read. Being, like huge dream crushers. No, no, but but, but this is where, <laughs> Sorry, yes. but this is but the cool thing is though is that a lot of people there it's and there's no reason why anyone out there can't make this happen for themselves if they are willing to put in the work off the top. And it's like things that you're gonna look back on in five years, ten years and go, Oh my god, I can't believe I actually got an agent by writing that. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But it is part of it is part of the process and, and uh Ramona is absolutely a product of that. I don't know what I am. But. Yeah, I don't know. I relate to Ramona's kind of story, what she was saying earlier. I started writing fiction when I was like seven, eight years old and graduated as stage plays around 11, 12. And when I was 16, I bought a screenwriting book and wrote my very first TV pilot, like spec script. When I was 16, I haven't stopped writing since. Yeah. That's, that's, made, that's awesome. You know, you have yeah. a and the other thing I would say is to really tap into a community of people that are also doing that. Writing is a very lonely pursuit in a lot of ways. And I think if you want to work in TV, I'm okay. <laughs> if you want to work in TV and film, you have to collaborate and you need to be a writer who wants to work with people. And so that's like a really big component that I would, I would say tap into a community of people that are making these short films, make friends, make connections in small ways, and then build from there. It's, yeah. it's really important to be a person that people want to be around. So It's really cool to be in a writer's room because you're watching all these different voices that have to listen to each other at the same time, you know, and, and go, I have this idea, and everyone go, ah, that might be a little off where, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy about that, and still be able to, be, you know, have the guts to throw out another idea and another idea and accept those ideas yeah. as well because it's such... It is community. It is absolutely, uh, you're not an individual, especially in television. You really have to listen to each other and, and uh, to, to, you know, get the vibe, of it. It's, uh, get a vibe of the show that feels consistent also, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll always kind of gravitate naturally to the people that have a, sense of same, a similar sensibility to you, too, mm -hmm. I find. Anyway. Um, Wait, did you have another question? I'm not sure if we... We just, yeah, it's Do we have so to vote? Yeah. Like, we need to trim it back. I yeah. Think, we're not very good at this. We're just laughing. Okay. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> this is exactly what we want. This is, it's very natural discussion. Okay. Um, Ashley, go ahead. All right. My question's uh, for Stefan, and my question is, uh, having been part of Suicide Storylines twice uh, during your time on Degrassi, how did you prepare differently this time, and which Suicide Storyline was harder for you to deal with, I guess? Um, well... And truthfully, it's it's when you know the the first time around when when Snake finds Chloe, that was for me as an actor. It was a lot of it was a big challenge. It was, it was strangely a lot of fun to like listen. And, and the truth is, as an actor, you always want those those big gritty stories. 
because it just allows you to, to explore more. No one wants to shy away from those things. So to be allowed to be the one that found, found Claude, you know, and have to deal with it afterwards was a, a real challenge. Um, I think that uh, for Simpson, he was, I, I, for, sorry, for Snake. Snake was a very innocent kid in a lot of ways. And that sort of took away a lot of that innocence. And it was, uh, um, you know, he, he changed when he came back to the school. And, and uh, he, he didn't, he, he wasn't dealing at first. And that was the experience of uh, a 16, 17-year-old. Uh, the way that I played it as Mr. Simpson was interesting, though, because I, I did take it on as being a principal, and sort of like I, you know, we thought about this, we talked about it, and I, I sort of disconnected myself, as I had Simpson dis disconnect himself from what happened with Claude in those moments when he's talking to um, Maya. If you really want the truth, and that he is dealing with a student, and it's very hard, and it's, but he's dealing with it as a principal of the school and protecting the school and the kids. That's how. That's the way I looked at it um, versus taking his own personal stuff that happened decades ago mm -hmm. and bringing that to the table. Um, not to say that that's not a part of who Simpson is and that he carries it, but in my mind, at that moment, Simpson had to deal with what was at hand right now, yeah. mm -hmm. if, that's, mm -hmm. if that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's great. Uh, that was a that was a deep a deep question. Deep thoughts. Man. Yeah, that was some really deep questions. Okay, um, this is a question uh, from Twitter, and this is for Ramona. Um, do you ever get writer's block, and how do you deal with it? And this is from uh, Firebite Floor. Firebite Four. Firebite Four. Um, I guess it, uh, I don't really get writer's block because I don't let myself get writer's block, which sounds like. Oh. oh, wow, and we're out of power. Oh, my God. Okay, we'll be right back. Are we well, on? Just, okay, you guys stay here. I'm just going to... Oh, my God. What? My answer was so amazing. I should you, took the, I Beyonce, you took the power away. I what just happened? Google. You Beyonce right the now. Google thing. Shut her down. Yeah. Sorry about that. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> She's embarrassed. We're I'm fine. so embarrassed. Oh, Keith, oh thanks. My God. <laughs> thanks, Keith. <laughs> I turn, yeah, because I turned the lights on, so I guess I should have. My bad. One of our fine crew Thank members you. around here <laughs> thought we weren't in the room and turned off the lights on us. It's really professional here I'm at Epitome. I'm so sorry. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm glad it wasn't like a really emotional question. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Yeah. But yes, keep going. Um, all right. Okay, and so uh, back, yeah, so like far, so the okay. so we were um, talking about writer's block. I think probably um, what did I say? I don't you, really so you, you don't get writer's, 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 writer's block. block. Yeah. I do get writer's block, but I I really have prided myself on refusing to let it get to me. Um, the thing is, is when you're a professional writer. You have deadlines, you have a production that is waiting for your pages. You have to power through those things. And I think over the years, and this is not something that I had naturally, it was just something I learned and grew to be able to do, that you just you have to put something on the paper. Even if it's garbage and you have to go back to it and rewrite it a million times, if you get words on paper, it's going to help you. And I think you know, knowing that someone of an entire team of 100 people is waiting for you to finish and to come up with something, you know, it makes you realize that you have to do your job and you have to get it out. And I think if you're a non-professional and you want to be a writer, a really good skill is to just interior, blah, blah, blah. Somebody says blah, blah, blah. There's a million times where I'm like, Eli says something hilarious and that's the scene, you know, and I go back and be like, ah, he can't say that. I have to actually come up with a piece of dialogue here. Um, and it's just, you know, if you get words on paper, you can always go back. And there's, you know, a lot of rewriting that we do here. So you have opportunities to make things better and to get other people's feedback. And that's the great thing about a writing room is you can put something that's sort of, you know, temporary and you know isn't the best, but hopefully your team is able to support you and help you get, um, you know, the best work out. So, so power through. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And also, uh, this is a question for Stefan. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what is your favorite Degrassi experience so far? And you've been, because including Degrassi Hot, so this is your favorite Degrassi moment. Mm -hmm. And this is from uh, Lynn on Google Plus. I don't know. I think that I mean it's a tough one. I mean, if I uh, just off the top of my head, <clears throat> one of the as one of the best times I ever had was uh, when we wrapped up Degrassi Junior High, we did a special called Schools Out, and I think we were only just like 18 or 19 years old at the time, and we, uh, there's this whole sequence that takes place at uh, someone's cottage, and so they all had to take us all up north, like 
everybody. <laughs> it was amazing. We all lived in a hotel for like three days. No. And yeah, it was kind so of, fun. it was awesome, you know, and so you're shooting at this cottage and it's just a beautiful day mm -hmm. and you're with all your friends and then I had to go rescue someone who was drowning in the water. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to get into a fight with someone because he was having sex with two girls at the same time. And it was just, <laughs> an yeah, I had to drop an F-bomb. <laughs> and then we all go back to the hotel. We all have dinner together. And people running through the halls. And it's just, it was awesome. That was so like, I look back at that as like one of those, those, those great moments uh, for me. Um, Next Generation? Man, I see, I have so many, because it's more recent. I have so many great memories of it, though, and I I don't know. I think there's sometimes where it's like I start blending all the moments together. I'm trying to think of what's like what was great. I, I'll tell you as a director though, what was a lot of fun because it was so out there was uh, two things. I think Degrassi of the Dead was kind of a blast, which was kind of the zombie stuff. I, okay, I have three moments. Yeah, uh, that's all right. And, uh, another one was uh, um, directing the scene where Riley finally admits that he's gay oh. and he was in the and I think our Jiris really got to a great place in that scene we built this washroom and he's he, there was you know the guy who was the other uh, oh the swimmer the sw yeah, yeah he was the other uh, a lifeguard lifeguard right, and who yes. was openly gay and mm -hmm. it was the two of them struggling and our Jiris got to this amazing point where the performance was so raw and so strong and I was really proud of him and uh, that was like one of those moments where you're like, oh man, I hope this works. I really hope this works. And you're watching, you're like, on the monitors, we're watching, we're like, oh, oh, that was amazing. That was so good. I think another one for me was um, Cassie playing Manny on top of the bus in Degrassi Goes Hollywood, because that was like, that was my really first big thing to direct. And so it was kind of over the top a little bit. <laughs> But it was, you know, she's singing that song, Life is a Show. And, you know, you've got Nina and Raymond and the whole, and Jamie Johnston and Delmar. And they're all on, the, on top of the bus singing together. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. And I got a crane so I could come over there. It's like, we don't always have a crane, so that was kind of cool. And the last time I like, – those are times where I sort of get, like, shivers of, like, happiness from directing. And then I just had one from one you haven't seen yet. And I can't tell you what it is. But I, it was that moment also that I've had, which was sort of like that Argyris moment where I was watching and I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And it was everyone behind the monitor went like this. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah totally and, and, and listen, this. we do that a lot on this show, but it was, you know what I'm talking know, what about? I talking about. It's because you're, you're, everyone was just like, holy crap, I can't believe it just went there. Good. And it, you're just so proud of the actor. And, and as we are a lot, you know, I mean, we've had some amazing performances and, and once again it was one of those moments that I think we we're just like that's that's gonna be a good one that's gonna be uh, something that people are gonna remember so that, that's what I get proud of you know and I remember man I like to go on yeah no we will we can do a <laughs> best of it? best of stuff in collection later like a DVD box yeah, set <laughs> DVD box set with stuff yeah okay You're this is this is a light, fun question, and before I jump Yay. back into the room, so this is a, this is something that's been tweeted at me like about 20 times, so I'm not even going to bother naming every person, but you know who you are. <laughs> and um, the question is, which couple do you ship? And everyone wants to know. Oh, everyone wants God. to know. Who do you ship? And this is this is going to be a polarizing question, so think twice make, so before people, you answer. So many people are going to be mad. People, oh, are you going to be wearing a red bandana, a blue, like, an eclair? Like, what dessert do you prefer? You know, like, all mm -hmm. that. So choose your favorite ship. And maybe if you guys, anybody in the room, are dare to speak of who their favorite ship is. Can we hear, like, can we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't we go across the bottom? Okay, so, Ashley, well. you first, and then we'll go to Jamie, Carrie, Kira, and uh, Miranda. Go. Ashley. I have no clue. There's so many couples to You're choose from. I'm gonna it's say what we're gonna say. What you're I don't know. <laughs> I really liked uh, Spinner and Darcy. Okay, that's oh, a good one. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, moving on. Jamie. I like um, e Claire. I like Eli and Claire when Eli is stable, but when <laughs> Eli kind of starts going off the rocks, it kind of I, I worry. Yeah. Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. Uh, forever ship uh, Sean and Ellie. Uh, from the current generation, I loved Allie and Dave until you guys crushed my soul. That's uh, what we do here. <laughs> Great hearts. I would say either Eclair or Paige and Spinner before he went all crazy with Manny. 
Huh. A lot of old school, like old school Degrassi yeah. going on right now. Yeah. I like, I love everybody who's like on the internet. <laughs> Miranda? Miranda? Oh, uh, Miranda, sorry, unmute your mic. You can't hear you, Miranda. Can't hear you. Unmute. Okay, there we go. Try now. Said Ramona and Stefan. Ramona and Stefan, yeah. <laughs> Refin? Yeah. Stemona, I think. I can't hear, but I'll say what my. Okay, go ahead. I have a tie, and then we'll get back. I have a tie. It's well, I I do love Eclair. I am a big fan of them. And I I know we we piss a lot of people off with the back and forth, but it's one of those stories <laughs> that like it just it feels really good to to mess I them people up. People were cool with it. I don't know. Yeah. But you know. I don't know. Okay. But also, I'm also a big uh, Holly J. Declan fan. I was just gonna say yeah. they were my they were they my yours? they were my favorite. They were such amazing. Favorite couple. They're the biggest jerks, and they got together, and they were better because of it. Like better people. That's they the craziest so cute. thing. You know, they're like so think about it. They were both, too. but they were both asses at first. Oh, you I know? love that. And then they I they just they, they grow, and it's like ah. So like I I really like what what did we call Declan and and. Uh, Dolly, 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 Dolly J. J. Dolly J. Yeah. 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 And, and also, uh, Drianka, a big fan oh, yeah. of them. I, yeah. I love Bianca and Drew. Yeah. I think they're awesome. They are so cute. Uh, they're like two of my favorite people to yeah, work with, like too. Yeah, like peas and carrots. Yeah. Two Can we get Miranda's? Yeah, sorry, Miranda. Miranda, Miranda are you hearing? Oh my gosh, the mic is. Miranda, you're so quiet. Put it on a piece of paper and hold it up. <laughs> um, You, come on. Okay, so. Oh, it's okay. Oh, do we have you? Quiet, Miranda. Miranda? No. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, I really don't want to answer this question because as a writer, you should not have favorites. Favorites. Because we won't you know, tell anybody. It's only live on the. I love them all. I'm just honestly just like <laughs> picking, like going, like, well, okay, what's coming to mind first? Oh, we got one. JT we got it. We got a. We got a video here. Hold on. I'm just gonna click on this Liberty. one. We got. Yeah, we got JT and Liberty over here. <laughs> so, 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 so. No, I love oh. JT and Liberty. <laughs> I'm just pissing people off. <laughs> so, yeah, Miranda, do you want to type it to us? Question. Miranda, do you want to type it to us then, maybe? And then we'll jump to another question. But I want Ramona to say. Oh, say no. so okay, much pressure. So the only time I think I've ever said I ship, well, that's not true. I'm lying already. Um, I love Drew and Bianca. I worked very hard on many scripts to keep Drew and Bianca together. I think they're a great couple. I support them being together. Um, however, the only couple on the show that I really feel some, you know, super desire to be together is probably Jake and Katie. And that's because mm. they're the only couple that, well, not the only couple, but one of the only couples since I started on the show got together was like a new group of people. Drew and Bianca were kind of together sort of at the end of, well, sort of mm. beginning of season 11. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I hate that they broke up. And we, we have we have a uh, Courtney Willis who says Ramona loves Jake. Ramona loves Jake. <laughs> yeah, Ramona I'm loves. I'm so Jake. mad that they broke up, guys. You have no idea. I, but also, I think that's. I mean, listen, we love all the cast. Also, yeah. it's really like they're they're amazing people, and so you kind of get attached <laughs> to like. I like. I want Justin and Chloe. The, the I don't. I love doing scenes with them. Right. And sometimes you're like, I hope the fans like this. I don't know. But I love, I like, care. I know, I love, I love them together. <laughs> I think they're, together. I, they're the funniest thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think the great thing is that all the cast have so much, such great chemistry because they are such good friends. It's yeah. kind of like everybody gets along with everyone, so it's just magic. Jake and Eli are pretty magic awesome together, too, when they do pop <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Mo and Jake. Oh, yeah. Mo, Mo, yeah. Mo and Jake. Mo and um, Jake, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. The dudes in general. Oh, I love yeah. them. Okay, Jake yeah, so anyone. we digress again. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for all your great questions, that. guys. Um, do we, um, anybody in the room would like to uh, ask a second question? Just give us a hand chat. Um, yeah. Um, I oh, forever I ship JT and Liberty. That's oh. a given, but I also love Spinner and Jane. Uh, they were just so compatible. I even had the chance to meet Paula in LA a couple of years ago, and she was so nice. And this is from uh, Miranda. Thank you for that. Paula's pretty awful in real life, actually. So, oh. no, Paula's awesome. The best. I want to start like like drama. I can. <laughs> She's amazing. Stop trying to bring Degrassi into real life. Yeah, Stop right, making no. it into okay. real drums. Okay, um, Carrie, would you like to ask the next question? Uh, yes. Uh, this is well. This one's for Ramona. Uh. What are the best snacks that you've ever had in the writer's room? Um, we're, we are always very excited when the barbecue chips show up. We are always 
skipping down the hallway when there's peanut M&Ms. These are the rare ones. If there's red licorice, it's very exciting. Um, any combination of chips and chocolate and sweet. Clod hoppers are in there every once in a while, I feel. I love them. I love them. We also, um, we're them. very into gum. <laughs> Different flavors of gum, um, exotic gum, dessert gum, any kind of gum that we can get our hands on, it's always very exciting. But any combination of salty, sweet, chocolate is, is usually, are you sending us some? Is that why you asked? Send us gum, please. We enjoy gum. <laughs> Bubblicious. Bubble gum. Cool. Great question. Good question. Awesome question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Jamie, would you like to ask our next question? Me? Uh, sure. Um, I think one thing I'm kind of curious about in the upcoming episodes is how, because um, Eli is the one who discovered Cam's body, like how, like how uh, is he going to be affected um, like throughout the next few episodes with discovering Cam's body and just having to deal with that on top of his other issues. Are you asking for spoilers? No, I'm just kind of like, can I expect uh, Eli to go nuts again so I can't ship Eli and Claire anymore? <laughs> That's a spoiler. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to, there's going to be a lot of, of characters that are, we're going to be, you know, the, the truth is the last episode you just saw, we, that is just the beginning of watching different individuals and their path after this experience and how they're going to deal with it. And um, it's going to be easier for others. And uh, we, it's, it's hard for us to talk about this because we don't want to destroy any of the story coming up also. But um, you just have to know that that it's this isn't the, the end of the story. We, we are going to be dealing with how how people rise above and and for a lot, and in the meantime, actually, actually, sort of dip below because they're they're not uh, they're just not dealing. So it's very hard for us to talk about this without giving story away, unfortunately. But there's it it, it is dealt with in a variety of ways um, with a variety of characters, and some of whom you will probably suspect will be dealing with because you know they're intimately tied to what happened in Bittersweet Symphony, and some you might not expect mm -hmm. and not really know that that might have affected them and there will be smaller stories that deal with it. But I think we really tried to continue with this sort of global um, story for the next six episodes. Yeah, really. how, mm -hmm. how the, watching the school uh, just deal, yeah. you know? And uh, don't think they're like super heavy, like it's not gonna be heavy, heavy, heavy the, the, for the rest of the season. There is, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of fun that goes yeah. on and, and a lot of people trying to rise above and making asses of themselves because it wouldn't be Degrassi if we didn't have characters that made asses of themselves. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that we're gonna, we're gonna carry for uh, the next little bit. And it's, it, it should be really, hopefully, very rewarding, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everyone deals with it differently. So you'll yeah. get to see you'll get to see how everyone handles this this yeah. Yeah. this topic. Yeah. All right. Um, Ashley, would you like to ask the next question? Uh, all right. Uh, my question is, how do you develop characters, and how do you develop storylines? Um. <laughs> oh wow. well. Well, <laughs> it's this. A lot of this. <laughs> no. You know, we it, it goes back to it goes back to what we were talking about. Like we we sit, sit we sit down. The writers all sit down at the uh, beginning of the year, and I'll join them. And it's kind of just like, well, where do we want to see this character go? I'm I'm tired of this. Yeah. I think we want to see. We, you know, we've done this so much. We're we're taking them in that direction. Wouldn't it be fun to go back to go back in this direction? So we sit down and we just you got to blue sky. It. You got to just brainstorm every possibility of where those characters could could yeah. go. Even if they're nuts, and everyone goes, "That's the that's the craziest idea." Why would we want to do that? And then maybe you put it in the corner. Maybe you come back to that. Yeah. You know, you never know. So you have to sit down, and you just have to be. You can't be afraid that anything is wrong. You know, everything everything just has to. You just got to throw it on the table and see what happens. Yeah, and I think in terms of new characters, a lot of the times at the beginning of the season, when we talk about the existing characters, we always talk about, well how can we shake those characters up? And, you know, the way on TV that you shake a character up is you bring in a new character that challenges them, that interests them, that causes conflict or romance or friendship. And so we always go, okay, you know, Drew's a little boring now. Let's find a character that we can bring in that can butt heads with him that will make um, a new storyline. So a lot of times it's like 
we develop the characters based on what we have in play already and what we think we will need further. And sometimes, you know, the character that you're not expecting takes off like a firecracker and you also you get a really good actor and you just, you know, roll with that character. And sometimes that character might, the new character you bring in might not really inspire anyone or might stagnate a little bit. And so that character tends to fall away. So it's a really, um, it's a puzzle that we're constantly working on and readjusting. And, you know, it's just, it's a lot of people, you know, really living the show, mm. you know, 24 seven. And, you know, you never know, you might be three o'clock in the morning, you might think like, oh, that might be a cool like turn on that storyline. And, you know, Sarah's got like 57 texts in her, you know, on her phone and, you know, we all come together and we beat it out and we work through it. And it's just a lot of people thinking about it and breathing it and developing it and then just writing, writing, writing. Yeah. So. And you never know what kind of character is going to take off. You know, I mean, the, the funny thing is you think about how we introduced Drew. Drew was actually sort of a, uh, someone to basically poke Riley, you know, in a lot of ways. Like it, it was, uh, he was, he was sort of brought in to mess up the football team a little bit. And, you know, we liked Luke a lot, but Luke became a lot more than I think we expected him to be as an actor. And he's so much fun because he plays, he's, he plays such a good goof, you know, but he also can do such great drama. He's a good looking guy. So it's like, it, but he's got, it's sort of like a spinner quality to him at times where it's just like, walks through life and then a terrible thing happens. He's like, I won't do that again. But then you can make him do something worse. Yeah. You know, so he's that character that can, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it is one of those things that you, you don't, you, the characters are sort of like thrown out about you throw them out and go what do we need for that other character so it's, it has a lot to do you know with how cam probably uh came about um knowing that it was it was going to be good for maya mm -hmm. i think to uh to help inspire that character and bring her up as well um by introducing cam and and um knowing that that the, we we needed to bring we just we, we needed another character to Em embrace, I guess, yeah. at the same time. And to shake up that group of diners. Yeah. All right. And yeah, we're running out of time, so we'll just, oh, we'll just try to get through as many questions as we can. Um, so go ahead, Kira. Uh, do you have a question? Yeah. Okay, uh, one of my questions was, are there any past Degrassi character storylines you would like to continue? Like, like off the top of my head, what happened to Paige's HIV results with Griffin? I'm, I'm so lost with certain storylines like that. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I'll tell I you. That's not going to come up again. It's never going to come up again. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, It was one of those things where, like, well, yeah, she she <laughs> dealt with it. It, it. it was happening, and there's a lot of stories that we don't wind up following because it, there's there's the not the time. Black hole. Yeah, the black and holes. it it it, it, it is one of those things where we're going. I like some people are interested, and some people aren't, for that matter. And it's I we we didn't. Feel, we thought that was actually sort of wound up being enough story for us that she, she, you know, as far as we know, she's been testing herself, you know, <laughs> taking those tests. She's fine. But she's we think she's fine. She's been responsible, guys. She's been, yeah, she's, she's, she's been okay. responsible. Yay, Paige. That's the best I can tell you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Miranda, would you like to ask us another question? Is your mic working now? Okay, it's not working. So you want to type her a question, and we're gonna we're gonna ask um, the next question that we just have on online. And this is uh, something that's been coming up over and over again. So um, this this question in particular is from Twitter. It's from Leah Beeps, and uh, can you tell us how Cam died? And this is something that a lot of you guys have asked, and and because it, it just was shown in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. and we never showed it, and I, mm -hmm. and I and we all respect that decision for sure. Um, is there I guess any thought um, um, that came up? The answer is no, we will not find out the method in which Cam committed suicide, and there is many reasons for that, and um, Stefan touched on it before in terms of how we approached this storyline, is that we weren't ever going to put something on screen that would be harmful to our audience, and we um, had a psychologist come on board very early um, in the season and was very um, instrumental in helping us get the Rusty Cage episodes off the ground and how we portrayed Cam's, um, you know, problems um, effectively in that story. And when we talked to her about this, that eventually Cam would be committing suicide, um, she gave us two or three guidelines, and which are minimal considering, um, you know, the amount of story that we spent on um, this, you know, Cam and suicide. But there was two or three strong guidelines in terms of what she would advise us not to show, and that was one of them, and we respect that 
um, that note from her and we chose not to. And I think in terms of creatively, in terms of the show and the episode that you guys saw, um, we really wanted to have you feel like you were a student at Degrassi and not knowing the details, not seeing a body, not knowing method is how it would be if you were a student there and you sort of knew who Cam was but didn't really know him intimately and you would not get those details. And so I think creatively it worked in the episode not to see that and I think it was also the responsible decision in terms of how Degrassi um, portrays these really tough things and what we decide to put on screen. Mm -hmm. So that was, was this, that's the basic answer. It was the same with the lead up of, you know, going to Bittersweet Symphony Part 2 that <clears throat> we didn't see Cam again in the real final contemplation of, of doing this. It's, re we really wanted it to feel like no one got a chance to say goodbye to Cam. Does that make sense? You know, that, that this way it's a shock because he's gone. And that's that's the way that you know loss works, and in, in, in that you know you don't get sometimes you don't get those goodbyes, and I think a lot of people I, I think a lot of people related to that that there's not always like the, the a goodbye note or a, um, a ch an opportunity, and it's it's uh, I, it, yeah it was really important to us um, to show to show that because it's, you know, you kind of want to understand what someone's thoughts are and how they get there. But we really wanted to show someone contemplating it and being saved and doing the right thing. And I think that's why the Dallas story is so effective and people are so drawn to it is that they see someone in that black moment and that person gets saved. And it's really important for us to, to show the positive that can come out of a moment like that. And, yeah. and so we really moved those scenes and that emotion and that darkness into the Dallas story and saved it for the, bit, the yeah. better outcome. We Absolutely. really needed to get, yeah. sorry, we really needed to get to those characters that were still here, if that makes any sense also. Yeah. We needed to get to, in a sense, to deal with, to the, deal with the, the, the people yeah. that are left uh, dealing with the situation. Yeah. yeah. And okay, so we're going to jump, sorry, um, to uh, Miranda's question. Um, Miranda, do you want to try your mic now? Okay, so it's still not working. Um, so it would be. Oh, Miranda. <laughs> ah, oh, the mic, Miranda. Oh, the mic problem. Okay, so we have the question here. If you had to go back and change one of the character storylines completely and drastically, who would it be, and uh, how would you change it, and why? So this is a, a blue sky question. This might take a little while, huh? I don't know. What you're asking us is which story we regret. Yeah, I'm I know what you guys want me to say. It's like, why did uh, Spinner and Emma get married? Is that is that your problem? Is that your problem? Oh my gosh, everyone, everyone. Is that, you got a problem with that? <laughs> I would not take that back for a million years. I was not on staff when that happened, so I can't. Well, I directed it. I don't write it. the show. Yeah. <laughs> I directed it. I was like, this is the most fun ever. And then <laughs> online, everyone's like, what the hell were you thinking? And I was like, oh. But I'm standing by it. I think it's fun. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is a question um, from Emily Clark. She wasn't able to join us. Um, okay. the, the timing just, uh, we weren't able to fit her in right now. Um, so my, uh, her first question is for Ramona. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is a basic day like for the Degrassi writers? And um, like, how do they choose who writes which stories? Um, so a basic day um, is really, we have a couple rooms. Um, usually it's all of us sitting around a table. And it's, you know, either brainstorming characters or storylines, um, breaking an episode, which is sort of, we sort of split off into groups of two or three and um, basically beat out the story. Like, you know, Adam does this here and then that there, and then we sort of go through our A, B's and D plot. So it's, it's about a week and a half of work before we pitch that story to Stefan and Linda and get sort of signed off on moving forward with scripts. Um, so you're either sort of brainstorming or you're breaking and the third thing you would be doing is story editing existing outlines or scripts. So each writer writes an outline, we bring it to the team, everyone reads and scribbles notes, that person goes away and rewrites based on the notes, and then the same process for first draft and second draft. Um, so it's very, it's collaborative, but you do have time on your own to write. Um, but it's just a day is talking. A day is My talking, office talking. is right beside one of the writer's rooms. <laughs> And all I hear is hysterical <laughs> laughter coming from that room half the time. And I have to go around and go, hey, what's going on? They're like, nothing. It doesn't matter. 
not that it's none of your business. <laughs> yeah, Wait till the pitch. And how many people? To be here. How many writers are in a room? So that um, yeah, we have about. Project. I mean, the team generally is about seven with a script coordinator. So that's the person who's sort of in charge of all the documents and um, you know liaisoning with production and um, you know crew and all that stuff. So there's that eight people. Eight, is that okay. Right? Okay, and cool. um, in terms of how we. Um, are sort of assigned which episode it's it's sort of there's a rotation of people and we just sort of cycle through and sometimes it's availability and you know other things but um, at the beginning of the year um, Sarah the uh, showrunner sort of you know does the rotation and we just keep cycling through as the, the scripts come up so it's and very arbitrary it fits and it fits whoever's tone yeah sometimes it does yeah. but sometimes it doesn't and you mm. just get it and you just oh. roll with it and, you know, cool. Best. All right. So um, this is uh, so we now it's it's already just uh, we've been here for a little bit, a little bit. So if you guys uh, have any other questions you'd like to ask, and we'll maybe do one more round in the room, and then I'll try to pick a maybe one more sure. um, from, I'm from online. Fun. Yeah, are you guys having yeah. fun? Because because yeah. I we can we can. I could go on. on. <laughs> And on. Sounds like a threat or something. I when know, you say it that yeah, way, right? Like, you want to just talk. I'm messing with you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, who would uh, like to uh, ask the next question? Yeah. Okay. Kira, go ahead. All right, going back, going back to the minis. Can we ever expect to see like a Jack? What if Jack is a student at Degrassi? Oh, Jack. He'd be in high school now. Well, no, really. No, no. Really. He's a, he's a, a mini. <laughs> Okay. But, you know, it feels like, I bet well, listen, the truth I bet is, I, no, I think Jack is like, because I had him in season two, Simpson, like, the, yeah, but I, how many I know, but it, yeah, that's it's, right. it's hard to say because we do split years every once in a while. Oh, right, right. So it's not, it's, I, we'd have to look into it, but listen, it's something that could be on the table. I would hate to waste it on a mini, to tell you the truth. I'd rather see it on the show. Because I, yes, then, you know, I get yeah. more story. <laughs> I get a lot more story. Actually, this is this is a question that's come up a lot, and I, I'm, yeah, I apologize. Story. <laughs> I apologize that I don't have the exact handle of those who have asked the question, but a number of you guys have asked on all the different social media sites. You know who you are. That um, when will there be? Is there a possibility of having a reunion episode? Any chance of that happening? Well, it's it's really tough because you know all our actors are really out mm -hmm. there doing yeah. other things. Yeah, you know. Nice. Um, uh, honestly, the chances of getting Aubrey to come black, come back and play uh, wheelchair Jimmy is probably impossible, <laughs> as a lot of you guys refer to him. He leaves messages um, on Linda's voicemail every week. I really just want to come back and be on yeah. the I'm just happy that he follows me on Twitter. Okay, like that oh, makes he me happy. Yes, does he follow Drake you? follows me on Twitter. That was he was way before me. So yeah. I mean, and then you know it comes down to trying to get enough of them that are. And what was what is that story? I don't know. So I mean, listen, we never say never. But it's still like, I, I, I don't know. First of all, there would have to be a lot of appetite for that. And I know there is, but trying to get those people back. Nina's doing the Vampire Diaries. We're never going to get her back. Shanae's uh, doing an IO2. I know a lot of our Landon. actors. Did, nope. Yeah, and I see, we, I, Landon was here a little while ago. I talked to uh, uh, Paula Brincotti like every once in a while online. And we're, we're, we're buds, and I'm, we're buds with a lot of those people. And I don't even breach it because. You have to be serious about that, first of all, and we'd have to really go make a play for it. I, I just don't know what the appetite right here is for us to do that because we we want to care about we care about those characters a lot. They are part of our world, and at the same time, we do want to keep moving this world forward. So it's I know we lose viewers because we're bringing in new characters, and that's part of I think the show is that we don't want people to graduate from the show, but we understand if they do graduate from the show. Um, I love I, I love that we have new characters in that bring a new generation. And then we get that other generation going. It's, it's not as good as life. it's not, not as good, good as Jimmy. Not you know, as good as Jimmy. Life, Spinner's the real one, you know. <laughs> and it's like that's I love that though. I love yeah, that awesome. that everyone has their favorite part of their generation. And the fact that this show has been around long enough to have that conversation is it's kind of crazy. Like what other show gets that opportunity? Yeah. So mm -hmm. as much as I as much as it would be fun. And it's not off the table. I would never I'm say no. It. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ramona's gonna write it. Yeah, I take it back. Ramona's writing it. Yeah, and um, this is a question from whatever it takes um, on Twitter. Oh. And um, oh. to describe, can you describe what Degrassi means to you in one word? Not you don't even get 140 characters. You get one word. <gasps> Tricky <laughs> question. It's gonna be a boring word like community, you know. Community is a good one. Yeah, it's not that exciting. I mean, drama. Drama for sure. Love. Love. love yeah, is good. love, love is, is really good. good. It's it's 
friendship? Friendship. I mean, I, I wish there was something bigger that was like a, a word that sort of Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Panthers. Yeah. I think I think of a panther. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and, and we got we got an answer. Uh, Ka um, Kira says intense. It's also intense good. is good. Intense is intense good. Intense is really good. Um, yeah. That was yeah. Like, that's a good. That's a good that question. Like that was like twelve words. Yeah. <laughs> we don't play this game very well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, and uh, Miranda has a question. Will there be any opportunities to visit the set sometime soon or in a contest? Um, oh, there's always know. there's always possibilities, um, and uh, we always try to find a way to make it accessible for people. And, and whether that's through a set visit or through mm -hmm. a contest, through uh, giving scripts away, uh, through hangouts like this. So yeah, well, we just keep can't trying. show up at the at the front door and go, "Can I come in?" Which has happened a couple of times, but uh, you can show up at Stefan's house. Like, oh, come by that's my okay, house. That's though. fine. That's okay. But though. then you just get a tour of Stefan's house. <laughs> yeah, and like then you make me dinner. On the floor. You make me food, and I make you watch the like, Mustard in the fridge. Yeah, and, <laughs> and you're like, but I don't want to watch the Spinner and Emma story. I'm like, no, we're gonna watch it over and over again. <laughs> this is the best episode. Yeah. You're best gonna, one by yet. the end of this, you're gonna get on board with Spinner. And oh, everyone's gonna love Spinner and Emma. I'm gonna do a reunion special. It's just gonna be Spinner and Emma, and they're I'm just gonna make it. out. I'm gonna write it. Rhoda's writing it. Yeah. I can picture. It's funny. It's like on loop in your house. It's just like that. Jurassic goes home. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. But no, it's just not, the Spinner yeah, and just Emma like that. <laughs> Everything else cut out. Sean yeah. walks by. He's like, hey, guys, can I come in? They're like, just make no. it out. They're just, they're, 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 it's awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Know, like, the meanest <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry. Um, so let's, uh, anybody else in the room have a question? Uh, I'm sure there's a lot. You guys are eager to jump in. Yeah, Carrie, go ahead. Oh, my gosh. Is everyone's There we go. Up? Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, if there's ever a point where Degrassi has to end, uh, what do you envision the final episode being? I think we gotta blow it up. We gotta blow up the school. There's no other choice. It's the only way to end. Don't you think? I agree with myself. Um, I don't know. I mean. I think we have to blow up the school. <laughs> I, I don't. Gonna, I kind of love that as an ending. It's like kind of got really epic. It's got to be like, guys, we all graduated in four, three, you know. <laughs> but and, no one in the school. Oh right, no one's. Like in, everyone's evacuated. Right. They're outside the school, and then inside they're like looking for fireworks, and they're like, oh, if, the whole school went up. I, nice. I really believe that we have. I personally believe that we have many, many more years of this show to go before we ever even have to contemplate that. We are not contemplating that. If we ever felt like we knew it was coming, I'm sure we would we would figure something out. But the truth is, right now, we have no intentions of stopping. I'm sorry that I might piss some of you off because you want to see the end of it. <laughs> we would like to go for a lot time, a long time longer. So I think that, uh, yeah, it, there's strangely, you know, there's a lot more story to tell and different ways of telling story. And and uh, we're, you know, I'll tell you, we're already start working on season 13 and. There's a big revamp going on. There's a lot of really exciting new changes that we we're making for ourselves to make interesting, and hopefully you guys think it's interesting too. Um, but that more than more than wanting to end the show and how the show would end, I think it's about how we keep it interesting for both you and us. Yeah. yeah. Mm, well said. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, Jamie or uh, Ashley, did you have a question? I have a comment slash question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I've been watching since season one, so like I was like nine when it, nine. the show came on. I've been watching ever since. I've I've never missed an episode airing like ever. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, but like it seems to be in season six, like you killed off my favorite character. Now in season twelve, you killed off my favorite character. Can we not kill off my favorite characters anymore? No promises. Okay, tell us what your favorite Sorry. character is. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ramona goes home and she's like, yeah. so, and then gunshot. Hey, listen, <laughs> the truth is, I think we're, we're our, the, the, the record's pretty good. It hasn't, like, it's been a while since JT. And, our record is terrible. Oh, well, yeah, that's, no, that's awful. <laughs> but we are trying, well, like, we don't want it, like, honestly, there's a lot of people like, and it's so weird when you read online, it's like, Degrassi's lost its edge. They haven't killed anyone off in, like, forever. And then there's people that are like, uh, they kill everybody off on Degrassi. And it's like, it's been Neither is true, yeah. Neither yeah. is true, so. Yeah. Um, we, I promise that we won't do, we won't kill your next favorite character off. Um, Just keep us in the loop. Keep us in the loop. Yeah, let yeah, us know like who me. it is, and we won't do it. Your favorite character is Mr. Simpson, by the way. <laughs> He's here to stay. He's never, never going anywhere. 
I'm going to kill off this face, guys. So, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely try to. Uh, um, actually, we can't promise that at all. Sorry. No, we can't. You know, unless listen, you know, uh, Dylan Everett is like the most amazing actor, and he was, you know, uh, this character was brought in to the show, knowing that this was the intention, and we had to find an actor that could do the best job, and it was really, really hard. And then we found Dylan. And it got a thousand times harder. It got a thousand <laughs> times harder. And you, I, like, I remember Linda coming into the writer's room going, I don't know if we can do it. I don't know if we can get we rid of Dylan. Him. Like, he's, we love him. I'm, I, I, he's, like, we're just, like, in love with him. He's amazing. And, uh, and then it was a really, we just had to, and honestly, there were different, I remember, like, Sarah might at one point, and then, like, maybe you. And I was like, I don't know. But we, we, it, it, we finally got to that point where it's just, it has to be done. It's an important story. The reason we hired such an amazing actor to play that role was so we could do this story. So it's, it, it's awful for us. But, I mean, Dylan is part of our family now in that sense. And part of your family is the Degrassi family in that sense. So it's, uh, it sucks. But um, he's still around. He's still around, yeah, and and uh, hopefully that it's it was it was worth it to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Oh, it definitely was. Good, good. Thank I'm you. glad. Thank you. Yeah, it, I I know I felt affected by it. I spent the entire week and I couldn't even get dressed. I was so sad. Oh well, I know that sucks though. Also, because I mean, listen, I, honestly, we saw when I was we watched it with the with the with those uh, the other guys at uh, Much. Mm -hmm. um, that was my first time seeing it with anybody. Yeah, the Munch and watching talks. how affected. And I've seen it a bunch of times through editing and everything else. And um, to see it again with fans, we don't really get to see it with fans that often. We once in a while do, but it was really, I, we were all really affected. Like, I, we were all in tears and, and watching our audience be in tears. We're like, oh my God, when this, when, when everybody sees this, it's just like you can imagine all the households and everyone being really, really uh, upset and hurt by this. And, and we just really hope that if anything, you're going to just, you keep watching those episodes though, because we're going to watch as every, everything does get better, I hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but that's really nice of you to say also that you yeah. that you understand why we did it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And um, this is a really quick thing from Twitter. Um, and can you just say hi to Sharon? She, I guess she's just watching right now. I'm like, hi, hi, Sharon. <laughs> why is Sharon so lucky? I don't know. I just she just uh, I guess wasn't able to. Uh, she was awesome enough. Yeah, Sharon, you're the best. <laughs> Everyone yeah. watching is the best. Everybody Sharon everybody. says she loves Spinner and Emma together. They're yeah. the best. This is fake. He's lying. Give me back drink. <laughs> sorry. That was a lie. Drama. You, just, you really are that. just trying to steal Don't do that to up. Sharon. I'm sorry. She didn't deserve that. That was my <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody else in the room have a question? We're just gonna, or I'll just find a, another one for off of Twitter here or Facebook. Um, all right. Okay. This is a question from Jackie McCarthy on Google Plus. So overall, how long was the process um, in making Cam's storyline come to life, and, and were there any really big difficulties that arose? Like it, you, you kind of touched upon it a little, brief, like just briefly about you know how you guys really you know had a difficult time making mm -hmm. you know even making that final choice. Um, like in terms of, well, we, uh, when we brainstorm, did the brainstorm, um, we knew that this was uh, a storyline we were going to be pursuing and that Cam was the character we were going to be um, bringing in and um, using for this storyline. We um, used him in small ways and then we did the Rusty Cage episodes, which were written by um, Degrassi legend Brendan York. Mm -hmm. uh, and we kind of knew then that we had sort of put this, the, the pieces in place. And at that point, um, there was a few more months of breaking episodes. And then we started breaking this one in April, I think, mm -hmm. April or May. And then I wrote, you know, it was a typical timeline of three to four months before we, um, <laughs> we locked the script before hiatus. So everyone went away on vacation. And there was always this looming sense of when we got back, we were going to be doing the read through for this episode. And it was, it was really, really like, this is really happening. Like, we can turn back at any moment. We don't have to go forward, um, you know. But so it was a typical three to four month process. But behind that was, or in front of that was months and months of, you know, discussion, and research, and making sure we had the right elements in place to actually, you know, make the episode happen. So it's... what was the second part of that? What were the difficulties? Yeah, and what was the difficulty that you had? Like, was it were, were there any obstacles that you had to overcome? I mean, there was a, yeah. a point um, when 
the first obstacle was when the Team Nick promo came out for Showdown, and it was um, very Cam and Maya heavy, and it was, you know, very romantic, and, and, you know, there was, like, wind machines and, like, swooning, and we all kind of thought, oh, okay, um, great. Great pro promo, um, and we sort of worried. And then Kim appeared on the scene in Degrassi, and we worried some more because people were really drawn to him, and Dylan was um, someone that people really were drawn to. Um, and then the Rusty Cage episodes appeared, and we knew, I think at that point, we knew what we were in for in terms of continuing the storyline and, 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 you know, sticking to the path that we set up because we knew it would be really hard, and it, it, it got a little hard after those episodes aired and we knew that people had bought into Cam and they just wanted the best for him and they wanted him to get better and they were everyone was so hopeful that there would be a storyline where he got better and knowing that was the feedback we were getting after those summer episodes aired to be to continue to move on with the breaking of it was a really I think it was emotionally difficult for us it was logically difficult for us and it was just you know me personally once I started really breaking the episode it was was head down, don't think, just go, just like, let's just go. So, but it was really hard. And, it, and once we knew how p attached people were to him, it just got that much worse. That's, that's the worst part because you, 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 it's very hard to make a couple that everyone falls in love with because you don't know if it's going to happen, you know? It's, and for every... Fail more than we succeed in the well, for, for every eclair, you get a event spinner for that matter that maybe not everyone loves. And so when we get like, like Olivia and Dylan and they have massive chemistry together, it it uh, it makes it it makes it very very difficult because like it doesn't really? happen every day that that kind of like they they just brought each other up in those scenes and they were having so much fun and they understand the nuances of you know Cam's got secrets but she's still drawn to him and she wants it's her first boyfriend and it's. And sort of their awkward, cute, like, moments. They're like, they so just great together. They nailed everyone that, you know, we gave to them. Yeah. So, it was, it was so that hard. makes it, it, it makes it hard. It makes it really, really hard. And, and at the same time, the writers have done such, did such a great job at putting that on the page, and then they did it, which is a big challenge sometimes. And it, it's, it's always one of those things of, like, well, it's actually doing exactly what we want it to do. But it we, feels crappy. But it feels crappy. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, and we still have to have fun with them leading up to the inevitable episodes that we just we just showed. So uh, um, it's a it's a weird it's a weird business sometimes. Yeah. Like you yeah. have to fall in love with people, knowing where you're going with them yeah. emotionally on their on their mm -hmm. track. So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and uh, this is a question from Lime Polson on Google Plus. What is the best part uh, of working on Degrassi? There's so many, but maybe just sum it up in one. I mean, um, for me personally, and I think this like last three days has sort of you know epitomized what's amazing about it is that you're not just writing into a void. You're not um, a person who you know types on pages and then they, someone goes and shoots them and they're gone. Like you're involved in every step of the process, and and that includes interacting with you guys and, and you know caring about the fans and what they think and it just feel it's just such a warm, lovely environment to do the work that you dream of doing. You know, to be able to be a TV writer is kind of awesome and to be able to do it on a show that means so much to people and that people will carry with them for their whole <laughs> lives is really, really special. So I would say that.
<laughs> Which I season? I <laughs> if I hold if I do, <laughs> I, know I, I know I can make it through. <laughs> be the best. The best that I can, I can be. be. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> I know I, I know I, I know I can make it through. Wait, can you see my face? This was amazing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I want to just, first of all. Are we, so are we out? Are, are we, we, we good? No, we're all back on. Oh, okay. We're, okay. we're all, we're all back we're filming a and. Huge and statement right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Ramona, gonna... Ramona's having a, a big having moment, a moment, guys. A big moment. It's, I just want to commend phones. the digital team at Epitome. Abby, Krista, Kyle, you guys have been amazing this whole past three days. The work that you have done is extraordinary. The stuff that you put online and the support that you've given to fans through Twitter and all that stuff. Extraordinary. Thank extraordinary work. Thank you. Work. So I thank, you. you for that. Oh, thank you. Getting so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I was emotional reading everybody's responses. No, like that you're right. That, we that, are so you know, like it's, it's, touched, these, these yeah. responses are so amazing. I'm sorry that we haven't been able to answer everything, but mm -hmm. it's like uh, yeah, there's so many, and, and we'd love um, to everyone in the room. Like we'd love to go around and just hear like maybe just a, a, thoughts, any yeah. thought or a, any thought or what you uh, have gotten from the show or anything you'd like to yeah. share with us in the audience watching. So, um, Ashley, is that okay if we start with you? Yeah, so I guess it's really hard to explain in words what Degrassi's done for me since I watched it for uh, such a long time and I'm so invested with the show and, you know, doing the fan site and stuff, but I think that, uh, I don't know, Degrassi's kind of like a little second life for me, like it's something that I can go to when I'm having a bad day, I can just put on a, like an episode of Degrassi and I'm like, it automatically cheers me up or, you know, you get really attached to the characters, like you, you laugh with them and you cry with them and uh, it's... Yeah, it's amazing. That's nice of you to say. Yeah. You know, I felt like kind of stupid saying community was the one word, but that's what it should feel like. It should feel like, yeah. you know, Degrassi for what we wanted that experience is to be, experience to be, is that I wish in a strange way that, I mean, this, I relate to these because they, they remind me of my friends. I wish I had a friend like that, yeah. that I should be looking for a friend like that, or, or this is like my experience now that I'm out of high school or going into high school, but it really is about what community should really be. So, but that's really nice of you to say. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank you for producing Degrassi and making Degrassi so wonderful. All of you. Thank you. There's so many people that do such a great yeah. job on this show. Yeah. And we'll hopefully try to get a little bit more of them uh, exposed to, you know, yeah. like the, this this loving community because there's so many brilliant people that work behind the scenes that yeah. have, uh, have made this possible. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Jamie, go ahead. Um, well, Degrassi has been a huge part of my life since I was a kid, really, and for it to still be su such a huge part of my life as I'm getting older and almost done in college and graduating and getting my bachelor's degree in like a year and a half, and I'm still like so emotionally invested in it, and the point is, like, Degrassi says something, like, it, it's doing something right, and it says something um, each episode, and I know with this last episode that we just saw... Um, I almost went on, I went on a rant, like, okay, this kid, he had his issues, and people, and it was, like, kind of clear that there, that he has problems, and nobody stopped to say, hey, what's going on? They all just kind of went on treating him the way they kind of did, and especially with Zig's last words, Tim, like, was, I feel like, what drove him to kill himself. I mean, and it was, like, like, to anybody who's ever been cruel to another do you want to be that person who drives them to that point? Mm -hmm. And I'm always kind of crusading against treating people badly and just like treat people well. And it's kind of, you see it a lot on Degrassi, like kind of the effects on how people, how they interact with others and what it does. Yeah. And it just, it says something. And yeah. And it's tough though, because you know, it's, I know a lot of people sort of hate Zig right now and, and Zig sort of did like I mean he it's it's he was the guy he, the the guy. he yeah. said the thing and Zig never knew how sick uh, and and depressed um, you know that the cam was and it's it's one of those things that's it's it's important to to be sensitive and to talk you know um, to your fellow man in a sense 
and and not just uh, you know throw words words hurt and so and you don't know what what someone's going through and what you know what condition they're in so it's it's a it's a tough that's why this is so tough yeah but and I just, just a lot of people have talked about the zig moment and um, you know what it all means and there is a story coming up where you will find out and yeah. you will see Zig's um, follow up from that moment. And I think of all the stories we've done, that seems the one I think will help the most. And that's all I'll say. But I, like, but I appreciate that though, Jamie. It's a, uh, it, it means like that is that that's a lot of why we do this show. So yeah. Um, Carrie, would you like to uh, share with us? Uh, yeah, I've been watching Degrassi for like probably about eight or nine years and been blogging for about half half of that. I give you and... permission to stop watching. You don't have to watch anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll be watching away. until it ends, till forever. Yay! But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the thing for me is, and I know this is uh, with a lot of people, that Degrassi is more than just some TV show that we – you know, sit down and watch on a Friday night, you know, for 30 minutes. It's a, it is literally like a daily part of my existence. Like I, I make time to discuss with other people about it, to watch it, blog about it, whatever. And, you know, it, it does more than just, you know, it's, to me it's more than just a TV show. I mean, I've developed so many friendships with people, you know, other fans, met other fans, hung out, and it's just a great way for people to, uh, come together and you know do and talk about something that they love and this is what you guys do beyond just creating a show for people to enjoy you create a show for people to enjoy with other people that's yeah. really nice really to nice. say yeah. too yeah. And, and I must say it really means a lot to us all the, the community that kind of um, that they talk to each other and you know with, like you know sites like your own Carrie or like um, Ashley mm -hmm. like your site like it means so much to us to have these places for, for us to connect also to people that are watching the shows yeah. and we appreciate yeah, it. we, we are constantly want to know what you guys are thinking so we yeah. know where to go to like hear yeah, those we love hear it. those responses uh, positive or negative so yeah mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Carrie appreciate that though yeah thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. And uh, Kira, go ahead. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, no, <laughs> I was going to say, like, Degrassi, it's been a part of my life since I was very young, even, like, the next generation when I was 13, and it, it gave me the freedom to be myself a little bit more. There are, like, so many episodes that I can relate to, uh, or new people that can relate to those, and I, I mean, I love Degrassi for being that show that didn't shy away from reality, and giving us the, giving us fans, you know, that community, even in high school struggling or whatnot, or middle school, or even in undergrad and graduate now, I mean, we still have a community of people, and it's, it's great that the show's still on, and I don't want it to ever end. <laughs> Maybe take us to, like, graduate school one day with uh, characters and everything, but I do thank you guys for having Degrassi and putting on the new episodes and, and writing the stories. Thank you very much, and we'll just, we, you know, it's, we, we try to maintain a certain uh, quality of the show because of fans like you that have watched for, for so long, and we know that, like, you guys have, oh, this season, not, like, I hated this season, but I love this season, and the fact that you're saying that we're still trying to, you know, you can, you see that we're trying to maintain that level of quality and, 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 and community and, and try to keep characters that are interesting for you, you know, at this point in your life is really nice for you to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Miranda, maybe your, I think your, your mic was working a little bit. Because we heard yeah. you sing. Yeah. <laughs> we heard your beautiful singing voice. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm only 15, so I've been watching the show since I was like four. And oh, I mean, back when you were four, <laughs> those episodes, I'm sure were just like, so I, clear. Just your mind. Yeah. So clear. I mean, my sister, my sister was a little older, so she like oh, okay. watched it with me. But um, I've been watching it ever since, and this show is definitely the show that's made me love film. And every summer, like I go to film camp, and I just I like keep on doing this, and I produce, and I like screenwrite, like Mona, and I just I honestly, it's the best show. That's so nice. Uh, that's that's awesome. like. Oh, listen, you know, when I, was doing it, when, I was, when I was 13, it made me want to be in this industry also. And it, it's, yeah. and, and tell stories about, 
What was? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I, but I, 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 I really appreciate that also, yeah. though. That you know, and all of you guys out there that are that are looking to you know be writers and producers and directors and actors that that now's the time to start putting that re like resume and pieces together with your friends, you know, and uh, help a family to if that's if that's what you want to do. But Ramona's right. You gotta like get all those. You gotta just keep going. Just gotta keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But thank you for thank you for hanging with us though. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you so one, much. Yeah, we just have like one comment um, from Jamie, and maybe we'll get some thoughts from you guys as well. Is uh, and it's from Jamie. Do you want to even share your thought actually to the public, or is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. You can un unmute yourself and go ahead and share it yourself. Okay. Um. Well, what I kind of typed into the chat was. Like growing up, like I like always saw like pieces of me like in all in a lot of the characters. So, like, and I was bullied really bad at school, and I had a lot of rough times growing up. So when I would turn on Degrassi and see, hey, I relate to this character, and this character reminds me of me. So I felt like I'm not so alone, and it was very therapeutic for me to watch it. And now it's like kind of I more comprehending it now as a, as I'm older, like kind of understanding it more um, of what's going on. Aside from just, hey, this is what I'm going through right now, kind of just coming back and looking at it and just like, I want to like kind of pass that on to other people now. So it's kind of been an inspiring kind of experience for me to have Degrassi a part of my life. That's so nice. Thank and you. I, can, I, I, bet, I bet I could understand what you're saying that like, you know, now that you're, you're watching not being in high school and you're watching the cam go through it. And you're watching another generation in a weird way go through it, and you sort of probably get this strange perspective from it. I can is that what, sort of what you're saying? Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's well, that's amazing. That's so nice to hear. Yeah, that's absolutely the truth. And how about yourselves? Do you guys have any stories you'd like to share before we wrap this up? And this has been a wonderful uh, chat, and thank you to everyone that's in this room and for everyone's comments. Um, it has been a really, really uh, emotional three days for, for everyone at Epitome and for myself personally even. Like it's been a lot and, and I think a lot of the support um, from, you know, fans like yourselves and fans like myself, you know, that um, it's, it's nice to know that there's, there's that conversation happening and, and especially like, you know, yeah. all of us have been going through this. And congratulations to the writers and Ramona for like a really, uh, I think a really well constructed, uh, uh, it's a, a great season if you ask me. I think season 12 is phenomenal. And it's, <laughs> it's uh, but this has really been uh, like a special thing because the stories, the, the, they're, they're, they're super hard to tell and I think I you do, guys have done an amazing job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amazing job. Yeah. Thank you all for your comments and your feedback and, and everything that's been sent to me on Twitter, Tumblr. Um, you know, it's been it's been an interesting experience. It was hard at times um, to write it, but I'm glad that you have received it the way we intended it to be and that hopefully it's something that you'll continue to talk about with your friends, maybe share it with your parents or your family. Um, and, you know, I think it's a really useful tool um, to continue having this conversation and just, you know, lifting everyone up. Yeah. We really appreciate this because uh, and all your reactions have been so positive because, you know, we're, we wanted to do right by you also. So it's, it's one of those things where we're really glad that you, you your, your experience was the right experience for the most part watching, watching, uh, even though it was hard and you cried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And sorry. And just one last thought from uh, Miranda. She said she wanted to share something with us. Go ahead. Yeah. I also wanted to thank Abby because I love what you do. Um, I love that you made this possible, and um, in school I'm part of almost every club, and usually I'm the communications coordinator and, like, the social media manager. So I do exactly what you do and hope to be doing that in the future. So um, It's possible. It's all possible. Abby's the poop. <laughs> You're great. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, but, you know, none of it would be possible without this uh, kind of, like, you guys all here. Um, that, that make it possible and make it so much fun. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much, and I guess we're going to wrap it up, and um, I'm really excited to do this again, and, and if you guys are up for it another time, you know, Absolutely. maybe we'll have a, maybe. We'll have a repeat. <laughs> uh, you guys wanted a reunion episode, right? Huh? Huh? I'm ready. I'm going to go. <laughs> nice talking to you okay, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Emma and Spinner forever. They're divorcing. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Bye.